What's up you guys, it's Jesse here and welcome to another look of the new Nickelodeon series Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and it's time for the character reveal <laughs> So sorry for the long wait, I had a lot of, I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot on my mind, I just had a lot on my plate at the moment, I, I'm so sorry for the late update, I just I didn't get a, uh, I didn't get a chance to get around to, but as promised, I have, yeah, as promised, I had a look at the, uh, the, the, uh, the character designs for the new series, and I know what you're thinking, um, okay, uh, yeah, we got some mixed responses for <laughs> of the, uh, of Turtles, and, uh, April, and Splinter, and, uh, also, we get to find out uh, the first look at Baron. Oh, wow. Yeah, unbelievable. So, yeah, I had a look at the uh, at both the live stream and the uh, behind-the-scenes video, which has just recently been released on the uh, on the new series. And uh, um, once this video has been, um, once I've finished, um, stay tuned for the uh, for the next video of my. Uh, of the uh, the teaser trailer of my, my reactions of the teaser trailer. So um about the uh well like uh like I said in the uh, in the last couple of videos of the uh, of the first look um there has been a few changes um and a few changes um just only like a few changes but nothing um yeah a few changes and uh, yeah. There's only been like a few changes and that was pretty much it until we get more information as we get closer to the series. Okay, so Raphael uh, is the biggest turtle and the leader and the oldest. Um, Leo is the suave, cooler one. He's the suave, cool turtle. Uh, Donatello is the tech whiz kid and Michelangelo continues to be the joker of the group. So, like in the last video, there's only been a few changes, not a lot until recently. So. Yeah, let's uh, let's see uh, what more more changes are in store for the series, shall we? So first off, the turtles are going to be different species of turtles, not just one, or not just uh, not just one, not just like uh, the box turtle or the the pet turtles or the uh, uh, in the Michael Bay film the Ready Sliders or something like that. They're gonna be four different species. Um, I think this is actually matches with their um, uh, with their personality and traits. So Raph is going to be a snapping turtle. I'm just having a look on my um, on my laptop of the information I got. Um, yeah, so Raph is gonna be a snapping turtle. That actually really fits well because snapping turtles are pretty big. Yeah, they're pretty big and they're pretty dense. Uh, Donatello is a soft shell turtle. Um, Interesting, soft shell turtles, uh, their shells are more leathery and flexible flexible around the edges and vulnerable. Let's not, a very similar, well, let's not get into the details about, um, yeah, vulnerable. Uh, this kind of reminds me of what happened in the IDW comic book, uh, IDW publishing comic book series. Yeah, I, let's not get into that, shall we? That, well, that was a nightmare for us. Mm -hmm. Other than the 2012 series, <laughs> Leonardo is going to be a red ear slider, very similar to the uh, to the Michael Bay series. Um, we'll see more on that. And Michelangelo is going to be a box turtle, so he has the ability to actually pop into pop inside his shells, like pretty much like what the 2012, like what we saw in the 2012 series, and also a little bit in the um uh, in the 2016 film. So. Yeah, so that's uh, so that's the uh, four different turtles. I think there's like more information. So yeah, then there's the um, the ch order in um, since Leo is no longer the eldest anymore. There's a little bit of a change in the uh, in the um, in the age group. So instead of uh, Leo, Raph, Don, and Mikey, or sometimes it's Leo, Don, and Raph, and Mikey, it's going to be. Uh, from Raph to Don, Leo, and then Mikey. So they actually just moved Leo um, right after Donnie. So yeah, so that's actually um, that's another big change since Raph is now the eldest. And yeah, so, yeah. 
That's another change. So yeah, like I said, the series is going to be more light-headed, more comedic. It has going to be a lot of humor and stuff in it. It's not going to be um, it's not going to be as intense as the 2012 series, but who knows? Who knows what might happen? I think it, there might be some episodes that will be intense, that will be intense, but not as much as the 2012 series. I mean, that was a whole that went a whole new level. And I thought there was one episode in the 2003 series that was it was yeah. Like I said, intense. Okay, so now we move on to the uh, the different traits and the the, the, uh, the changes for each turtle. Let's start off with uh, Raphael first. Okay, so you have, may have noticed a big change for him. Not, I'm not talking about the leader or being the eldest, but the change of weapons. Where the heck is his size? <laughs> he does not have his size anymore. What the hell, man? Okay, so I thought he would be fine with his size, but I guess um, my my intel was wrong until we saw the character reveal. So he's gonna fight with a pair of Tomfers. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Where's the blade? Where's the um? Where's the steel? Where's the blade? Where's the blade for it? Uh, but actually, interesting. Uh, just like size, they are um the Tomfers are used for both defense and offense purposes. So it kind of like just acts how the um. Very similar to the size, so he can still fight some um, kind of like uh, how he fights with the size, but uh, just not with the sharp steels. Just, yeah, just not with the sh steels. I'm wondering, do they get. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'll answer that later. I'll I'll ask that question later about the um, about the original weapon. So, um, yeah, in the live stream, I actually, uh, when they did Raphael, when they revealed Raphael, he, uh, he's more of the, um, uh, reactionary type leader. Uh, he's more like the punch first, think later kind of guy. Like, like as usual, like he's the brash, hot temper, like the, uh, yeah, like we all, like the uh, the rap that we all know and love. And more like he rushes into the, into danger rather than come up with a plan. Kind of, yeah. I think that's the kind of leader he's actually. Uh, yeah. Also, he uh, has very big. Uh, he has respect by his brothers. Yeah, I, I almost forgot to mention, he's uh, respected by his brothers. So, um, yeah, like that, that's the, uh, he just wants to be, uh, well, um, uh, well, um, uh, what's that other word I don't know, respected, um, well, acknowledged, well acknowledged by his brothers and his, by his father. Yeah. And, uh, okay, and there's another thing that has not changed that both him and Leo will have their usual brotherly rival uh, like in any other in any any other incarnation so yeah there's gonna be like some like uh um some like um i should have been the leader and you should have like um like uh, the latest spot like who should have been the leader who would have been perfect like that or something like that you know but just like any other any 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 other incarnations, like yeah, I should have been leader and he should have been and just like I'm a better fighter than you are. <laughs> so we're just gonna like um <laughs> yeah, that's um yeah. We'll see more uh hopefully we get more information on more info on Raphael. Yeah. So now we move on to uh, Donatello. He's now the second eldest in the family. He's still the smart guy. Also, he has a fleet of battle shells. If you can um, actually, uh, we look at his concept of, uh, the ex recognizes a bit of a shell that's covering his shell. Uh, like I said, he's a soft shell turtle. Uh, he uses actually technology to protect himself because he wears one to protect his shell. Like I said, IDW Publishing, oh boy. That was a nightmare, just like I said, that was a nightmare. So, yeah, it's just like what they said in the uh, in the 80s theme song, uh, Donatella does machines, so it's kind of like, yeah, like, and he's also, um, he's an expert in the field that revolves around engineering, robotics, and technology. And he's also the, um, in the live stream, I actually saw that uh, uh, coding is cool, so that means he's more confident in his skills and, and he's more confident in his skills and he pretty much knows what to do unlike the other incarnations unlike the other Donatellos. So Leo is no longer since Leo is no longer the eldest and he's since Leo 
is no longer the eldest. Um, Donnie actually takes over as the mature one of the group. So, yeah, we all know that Leo was like, yeah, the mature one. He's the eldest. He uh, has to be in charge of his brothers. But now, since Leo's not the eldest, Donnie takes over. And he's a bit of a big science geek. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a science geek. And he has a bit of a psychic on the show. Hey, <laughs> I'm just saying, but I can tell from the, the from one of the concepts up, um, yeah, if we had a look, yeah, it looks like there's definitely going to be a dynamic between uh, Donnie and April, because we all know they've been best friends over the years, and they actually share some interest in each other. Yeah, they're a bit of a, bit of smart, <laughs> they're a bit of a, like a nerdy set, a bit of smarties, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, also, and as for the weapon, he wields a high-tech bow staff. Um, very similar to the 2000, um, probably very similar to the 2014 or 2016, uh, Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. So, very similar to that. And now we move on to Leo. Leo Sephora the oldest. I, usually, I would say, usually I would go Leo first, because he's the oldest, he's my favorite turtle. But now he's the third eldest, so, well, second youngest, or third eldest, the third one in the family. He's, a, he's next. So, yeah, anyway, uh, the difference is, uh, since he's no longer uh, the leader, he ha he's actually free to let his personality shine. He's going to, uh, we're going to, like, he's going to explore these, um, yeah, his personality, since he doesn't have the burden of being the leader. He's, uh, he's actually going to be very intelligent. Yeah, he's really good. A bit of a smart turtle. I mean, yeah, we got Donnie as the the smartest turtle, but Leo's gonna be pretty smart as well. Yeah, so, but he's also gonna be br arrogant about it. So, he's gonna brag about it a lot. Yeah, he's gonna brag about it. <laughs> he will also um, create these uh, these catchphrases and one-liners. <laughs> Man, I have got to hear. Um, usually, Mikey's the one who comes up with these kind of stuff, like uh. He's actually, yeah, in the 2012 series, he came up with these, um, these names, these, um, names, like, uh, like, Dog Pound, uh, Fish Face, um, I think Metalhead, um, uh, there's a lot, uh, I think, uh, um, yeah, in the 2012 series, it was Bebop and Rock Steady, although, yeah, Bebop and Rock Steady, um, but, yeah, so, this, you know, Mikey's, um, known to come up with names, but in this series, I think, well, hopefully Mikey will still come up with names. Leo will be doing, like, um, coming up with these catchphrases and these, um, one-liners and stuff like that. So, uh, let's, uh, let's, um, hopefully there's some good ones. Hopefully there'll be good, some good ones. So, uh, for the weapon, there's actually a bit of a change. Instead of the two katanas, he has, uh, this one sword. It's called an Odachi sword, which means big or great in Japanese. I, yeah, I think that's one. I, I looked it up. I, I looked it up. So it's actually a long two-handed sword rather than two swords. So we have to have to use two hands to uh, uh, to wield it. Yeah, two hands to actually wield it. So, yeah. So. And um, actually, interesting. I don't know if I... um This is, wasn't in the live stream, but I did hear at some point that uh, he will be uh, taking over as leader at some point in the series. Um... I think they said that Raph will start off as leader first, uh, at the start of the series as leader first, and then Leo will take over. I mean, he might have like the confidence or the skills, or the, maybe the, um, yeah, the confidence or the skills to become a leader. I think he just needs to mature a lot. Yeah, I think he just needs to take the time to find out who he is and then take over the job. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so last but not least, it, um, it's Michelangelo, we're gonna see little Mikey, yay! Okay, so obviously he's the baby of the family. He's the uh, the youngest turtle. He's uh he's gonna be the uh, the cowabunga turtle. That's right. I'm talking about his catchphrase. He's ironic catchphrase. He's original. Uh, we thought that uh, in the live stream, is he uh, gonna be a cowabunga turtle or a booyakasha turtle or a booyakabunga? But they're gonna start stick with the usual cowabunga. Yeah. The usual cowabunga. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, um, maybe you'll they sneak in a boyaka shot. But if um, yeah, if they might, they might sneak in a little boyaka shot. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what what might happen? And for the weapon, he wields um. Uh, let me see if I get this right. Uh, Kurus, Kusur, 
Kusari Fundu. Kusara Fundu. Kusara Fundu. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's basically kind of look like a uh, half nunchuck, half with a with a wicked yo-yo on the at the end of the weapon. So uh, it's kind of like a very similar to how he fights in the in the 2012 series. I mean, when he's um convert he's one of his nunchuck nunchucks into a bit of a chain um curse. Uh, uh, what is it called? A uh, cur- uh, I'll look it up. I'll just look it up. Yeah. So, uh, it looks actually pretty wicked, yeah, I think it, I did say it looks pretty wicked. So in the live stream, they actually said that he's uh, a sweet and loving turtle, so he's gonna be pretty much adorable. Yeah, he's gonna be pretty much adorable. And he and Leo, since they're the two youngest, they will actually share a close relationship with each other, as, as Leo will take him under his wing. So, that's also what I like to see in the series, uh, the, there's gonna be a like, um, there's gonna be some, like, brotherhood going on in there. It's, that's what I love about this series. That's what I love about the franchise. It's definitely a great deal of brotherhood. Yeah, a great deal of brotherhood. Uh, the relationship between, um, all four turtles on different occasions. So, it could be, uh, let's see, what, well, Leo and Mikey at one point, or Don and Raph another, or it could be the other way around, um, Leo, Raph, Don, Mikey, or Leo, Donnie, Raph, Mikey. So, yeah. So, you know what? We'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of adventures these guys are sharing with the team of two. <laughs> or team of four. <laughs> and so, he's also going to be an artist. So, you can actually tell by all these stickers. <laughs> the look, by the looks of the, uh, the stickers are all stuck to um, all of his shell. And I can tell him, but the, if you see those knee pads with the, sm- with the faces on it, it's, <laughs> they're actually adorable. So, he's going to be an artist in this series. Huh? What do you expect from being, um, uh, named after Renaissance artists? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> okay, so we done with the turtles. I think we're pretty much done with the turtles. So we move on to the, uh, to the humans. And, and when I mean human, I'm talking about April. So I have to admit, I really like April's design. I mean, the very first black woman. Actually, interesting, I thought that April was um, actually black in the comics, but it turns out she was originally attended because of someone that Kevin Eastman, one of the co-creators of Ninja Turtles, dated in the past, but they actually changed it into um, into a white April with, um, with red hair. So, yeah, but this time we have a black April with, bra- with dark brown hair, and uh, she does have her signature yellow design. So, yeah, it was, yeah she's a... Uh, her main color is yellow, but she's gonna be a very, for the very first time, a black girl. Yeah, black, black woman. Yeah, <laughs> black, black girl. Yeah, sorry. But kind of like, uh, she kind of looks like Irma, to be honest. She actually looks Irma, looks like Irma, with the glasses. But you know what? I cannot wait to uh, see more of Cat, uh, Cat Grand, um, the voice actress for April, of her performance. I cannot wait to see that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Also, if you guys notice in the concept of, she actually wields a bat and knows how to use it. So, pretty much, I think she might have been on, a, like, a baseball team or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she might have been on the baseball team. And you can actually tell by uh, the, the green glow on the bat, it, I think, you know, I think at some point she might have the same mystic powers as a turtle. She might get these powers um, around the same time as the guys or probably later on in the um, in the series. But who knows what could happen. Who knows what will happen when we get close to it or when we see it in the first episode. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for April. It's time to move on to Splinter and... Oh boy, I know what you guys are thinking. What the heck? And, um, actually, let's have, um, I know what you guys are thinking. Kill it with fire! Um, sticks? Let's not go too that far. Okay, wrong show. Let's not go that far. Okay, yeah, but still, someone is saying, kill it with fire! <laughs> yeah, kill it with fire. But you know what, um... But you know what? I, I had like um, second thoughts until I actually watched 
this part in the live stream. In this part in the live stream. Yeah. In order to make Sensei happy, yes. you must take one step to the left because you're blocking my TV. Yes, yes. Zach. I can't watch my show. You sound just like him. I yes. <laughs> Instant. Redemption! After seeing that, oh my god, after seeing it in the live stream by Eric Bowser himself, instant redemption. <laughs> but you know what? I cannot wait to see more of that iconic line. So he's gonna be a bit of a, a loving dad, but also a tough dad. Yeah, so he's a loving but tough dad. Hmm. Okay, so when I, um, you know, come to think of it, um, you know, judging by his, uh, the concept art, Judging by that, it kind of brings the whole, uh, you know, um, like, the whole Yoda slash Master Shifu from Kung Fu Panda, um, kind of appearance. Like, you know, maybe a bit small, maybe a bit around, around the edges, but, you know, anything that comes from small packages can deliver a big punch. It's kind of like that, so don't be fooled about, don't be fooled by his size. Don't be fooled by his size. Yeah, I think he's like, you know, a bit of a small guy with a, who can actually kick a giant's ass. <laughs> you know, just like that. Like, a, a small guy, kick a giant's ass. Yeah, kick a giant's ass. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Okay, um, I think in the live stream, if I remember correctly, or in the, uh, in one of the interviews I might have missed, um, he did gain, um, a few pounds. He did, probably did gain a, like I said, a little bit round, again, Round of, a little bit round around the waist because well he gained a few pounds and because there's like like there's been like no threat from from like anything serious or from you know who if he shows up um, he has no excuse to uh, train his sons he has no excuse to train his um his um yeah the turtles his son. But when a uh, when a villain like Baron actually shows up and plenty of more down the track, uh, he will actually begin to train his sons very, very seriously. So we might get to see some splinter action. I mean, we loved we loved his design in the 2012 series. I thought that looks actually pretty cool, making him a bit younger and taller than all the other splinters that we see. But I think I would love to see this kind of splinter. It's too. It's too. Too early to, um, too early to judge, yeah, it's too early to judge. So also, in the live stream, um, also, the question on everyone's mind, is he gonna be a mutant, is he gonna be a rat first who mutates into a mutant rat, or is he gonna be a human named, by the name of Hamato Yoshi, then he mut which gets mutated into a rat, like the 80s and the 2012 series, or a mutated rat from the other series. So they say in the live stream he's gonna be a mutator rat, mutant rat. So mutated rat. Sorry. Hmm. Does that mean he was a rat and then he got mutated, or was he human first and he got mutated and a rat? But I think they did say a mutant human. So I think he might have been a human at first, not a rat, or a rat at first and then a mutant rat. But I think we'll get more information on that. But yeah, I think he might be in a human first and a rat. Hmm. Who knows? Okay, then we move on to our, well, we move on from the heroes and then we move on to the villains. So let's check out with the, uh, with the villain Baron, shall we? So we actually got a chance to see the concept of our Baron, um, Baron Drexman? Baron Drexman, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he looks pretty rad. He looks, mm, he looks pretty threatening. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he looks pretty threatening like you know who. But, uh, well, yeah, he looks, yeah, pretty frightening. Okay, if you guys actually forgot who Baron is, he's an alchemist warrior mutant and a self-proclaimed protector of all mutant kinds from the hidden city. So, no doubt that he ain't gonna be buddy buddies with the turtles. Yeah, no doubt he ain't gonna be buddy buddies with the turtles. But who knows what would happen in the first episode where he will first appear. But we'll see what happens. And uh, for his conquest, for his um, changing to uh, his plans to change all of humanity into mutants, he with the help of his insect minions called mosquitoes. So no doubt there will be like like mosquitoes, like mutant mosquitoes. So yeah. Okay. 
I don't know if this is actually true, but I think, I think, the Shredder will show up. But who knows, it might be in the first season, um, or maybe in the next season if we, uh, if we have one. <laughs> yeah, we might get a second season, yeah. And hoping, I'm hoping that Casey Jones will actually show up. My money's on Drake Bell. Hmm. Better be, he better be show, he better show up because we already had Josh Peck, we need Drake Bell. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> also, we got some, um, uh, a little bit of familiar faces and a little bit of a change. Uh, we got the new foot soldiers. Uh, one of them is going to be a foot lieutenant, foot lieutenant, yeah. And the other is going to be the um, origami ninja. Um, I think they actually work for Baron for the for the first time before they move on to the Shredder if he shows up. And okay, so yeah, and the shows up. And uh, yeah, the foot elite actually creates the uh, origami ninjas uh, out of paper. So the so I think when the turtles show up, like turtles go up against them, they will be actually be vulnerable because they're made of paper or something like that. But We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. And then we move on to this, um, this, uh, interesting villain. Uh, this, uh, yeah, cold meat sweat. Seriously? Where do they come up with these? Where do they come up with these ideas? I mean, meat sweats? Okay, okay, so about this guy, he's uh, a muted pig. Is he the cousin of Beepa? Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, he's a muted pig and a former celebrity chef who uses a meat tenderized as a weapon and actually sweats meat. Hence the name, Meat Sweats. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna be a pretty picture, but hey, it's a comedy show. What do you expect? <laughs> so I have mentioned this a couple of times in, the, in this video that uh, there's a new place called the Hidden City, which is this new mystic place which is located under the city and I think, no doubt about it, that's where the turtles will get these mystic powers that we've all been hearing about. I think, no doubt, that's where they will get these um, mystic powers and no doubt April will get as well. Yeah. Also, I think, yeah, I think, um, I think I heard that the turtles may get their traditional weapons later on in the series. I think if Shredder actually shows up and if something happens to their powers or anything, they might get their traditional weapons, but who knows when that will happen. So, yeah, so Leo will actually get his, um, his dual katanas, Raph will get the size, um, Mikey will get, like, the pair of nunchucks, and Donnie will get the, uh, traditional bow staff. So, yeah, we'll see. I think they do get the traditional weapons. I might have heard that somewhere, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> So this series will be uh, a prequel to um, to the uh, to the show because it will show the turtles before they start off crime fighters. So it's going to show how it all began for them before they become the uh, protectors of New York City. So we get to see a bit of it at the beginning. Yeah, uh, the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, I just found out that uh, each episode is going to be 11 minutes longer, not 12 minutes, not 22 minutes longer. And so yeah, I thought it was going to be 22 minutes, but it turns out I think it's going to be like 11 minutes. But I won't find out. I, I probably, yeah, that's what I heard. And it, it's definitely going to be a 26 episodes in the first season. Okay, so um, now these uh, questions remain, which um, I don't think it has been announced yet, uh, about the uh, the Turtles and the Splinter's origins. Um, how will they actually first meet April O'Neil? I mean, in every series, they gotta meet April. I mean, there's gotta be at some point they gotta meet April, like in the first episode. Well, there's gotta be in the first episode, because uh, yeah, we already know who April is. We, she's gotta be in the first episode. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll see. And uh, what kind of characters would you uh, would we actually like to see in the series? Um, both the old one from the '80s cartoon, the uh, the 2003 series, um, the 2012 series, or maybe the movies, um, or maybe the new ones. Just like uh, just like a certain character that we just introduced. In. But my money's on. But for the um, for the uh, for the cast member. Um, 
Bring money is on the two by the free guys. I mean, I don't think we have any of them appeared in the 2012 series. I don't think we did. No, I don't think we did. No. <sighs> I guess that's it for, um, I guess that's pretty much it for me at the moment. I mean, oh god, there's a lot to go through, but, um, please, um, I don't know if I'm actually missed out any, um, missed out any information on, the, any updates on the new Ninja Turtles of the new series. Um, feel free to post a comment down below if, if there's anything I have missed out. Um, just, I'm just having a look at the, uh, the concept odds of the, uh, well, the first concept art that we got to saw, and then, um, and then the, this one, which is, uh, other than taking a selfie. This actually looks pretty cool, yeah. So that's pretty much it for me at the moment. Um, yeah, stay tuned for the, uh, for the teaser trailer reaction, the, um, for the next video that's coming very soon. Uh, yeah, if you want to post a comment down below of anything I missed out, feel free to do that. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Daily Motion account. Uh, you, you guys can find me on Twitter and Facebook, that's where I am most of the time. Also, you guys can find me on Deviant and FanFiction. Um, all the links are down below in the description. So yeah, anyway, this is uh, Jesse from Jesse Order Productions, and I am signing up. You guys, take care of yourselves, and so sorry for the late update. Hopefully, um, yeah, I got a lot on my, had a lot going on at my at the moment, especially um, especially what happened uh, early February. I am, uh, God, it's just terrible. To, that's just terrible. It's just unimaginable, but. I just want to let you guys know that well, we're all with you in spirit, and please, please stay strong. So uh, hopefully, yeah, please stay strong. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it for me at the moment. So yeah, anyway, this is uh, this is uh, Jesse from Jesse Water Productions, and I am signing off. You guys, take care of yourselves and have yourself a cowabunga weekend. And uh, yeah, have yourself a cowabunga weekend. <laughs>